What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and this one I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. I want to break down what's going on with the economic calendar thus far with the fear and greed index and some news affecting the markets. Before I break anything down, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. So anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market this far in some very important levels. Uh, I just want to mention that SPY is on a very, very nice uptrend so far, respecting this support. And there's no sign of this breaking down just yet. So there's no true reason to turn into a mega bear quite yet until we get confirmation on the chart. That's one of the most important things I typically talk about. But let's first talk about some economic data that's coming out and what the news is saying before we end up breaking down these charts and such. So today is Tuesday. It's the first day of the trading week. It's Tuesday, technically. The market was closed yesterday for Christmas and the market just got kicked off today. There's very, very minor pieces of data today. For tomorrow, however, I just want to remind you that 30 minutes after the market opens, we have the Richmond Fed Manufacturing Index. Uh, we have the Fed Services Index report coming out and very, very minor pieces of data. We have the 17-week bill auction, the two-year FRN auction. So all these auctions are coming out later on. Just know that during the hour of 10 a.m., so from like 10 a.m. to 10.30 during that time period, Eastern Standard Time, we have the main pieces of data. We have some manufacturing numbers and services data from the Fed. Everything else is very minor, though. None of this is like so insane that's going to cause a massive, massive shock. I do think it, it could cause some volatility. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. But don't, just don't forget 30 minutes after market opens, so like one hour after open, we have some data coming out. Besides that, everything else is quite minor for the next couple of days. It's going to be a very short trading week as the market has been closed for Monday. Uh, you know, just four days of trading before the year ends. And that's pretty insane how fast time is flying. Now, when it comes to other pieces of data, the fear and greed index is currently at extreme greed. And this is important because usually when the market hits these extremes, this is when the market is getting ready to top. And we're going to see a pullback coming soon. Now, does this mean we have to pull back immediately? The answer is no. We could still hold up for a couple of days, a couple of weeks. We could still hold up for more time. But I just want to warn you all that this doesn't mean we should turn way too bullish, way, 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 way too bullish when we see the market pushing up. The market could remain strong for you know another week, another few weeks, but there's eventually going to come a time when the pullback starts, possibly in January. So just be very careful. Keep this in the back of your mind, guys. This is just telling us that many indicators are reaching those extremes and the market is due for some kind of pullback soon. Now, it could, hap it could happen starting in 2024. It could take another two weeks for it to start. So I'm not saying it's going to start just yet. It's just that these indicators are at these extremes. Market momentum is very greedy. And one thing that's very important is to put in call positioning still at extreme greed. Uh, we're at the levels when the market tends to generally like top and stuff. So just be a little careful with that. And we'll see what happens going into next year. Market volatility is still quite neutral. There's not, nothing too insane. We're not even above our 50-day moving average yet on the fix. That's going to require more time for there to be some kind of a change. I also wanted to add that the headlines, excuse me, are not really saying anything. There's not really anything that insane right now. I think the market is just getting ready for the year to end before we see some new changes. Uh, but for now, uh, we saw some upside as we're seeing the QQQ, the NASDAQ, S&P 500, the indices just continuing to hold up. But the question is, what's going to happen to the charts as time goes on? And that's why I just want to start with SPY. I know it's very popular amongst many different investors. You could translate what I'm saying to SPX if you want as well. I tend to prioritize SPY because most of my viewers tend to look at SPY. Uh, the that's the reason why I typically talk about that the most. So what's so good about SPY right now? It's very sim uh, simple. So we basically invalidated this as a true bear flag in a way as we uh, ended up breaking this top technically. But I would say that we still have this channel and the, the, you know, the typical structure is still relevant. So we're still holding the support. And if we end up breaking this support, this bottom channel trend line right here we could turn a little bearish get a little drop here but we have to watch for a change in market structure so just to clarify guys what is the market structure telling us right now about the way the market's moving it's very simple we made this high here higher high higher low higher high higher low higher high again higher low are we about to make another higher high this is what the trend is suggesting we're on a very very nice bullish trend it still is looking bullish making higher highs and higher lows all right now, if you want to turn bearish, you need two things to happen. Number one, you want to see this support break. I would watch for a break like this. I want to see SPY basically retest, maybe break below 
474, then you want to see the back test. Do we get a back test like this and then start breaking down? If you make a lower high, then we could start kind of like channeling to the downside, right? That's another example of how you could kind of like draw this out. And this is just an example of how you want to just kind of like eye things. Just for instance, you could draw like another channel here and see if you break in the opposite direction. Whoops, I'm not supposed to use my fib charts. Uh, just like this. So doing technical analysis in a very sim simple manner like this could be very useful, very helpful. Just wanted to show you like how you should view this when it comes to turning bullish and bearish. But right now, right now at the time I'm recording this, we haven't broken down yet, and we're continuing to remain higher, and we're continuing to see the market push. If you look at some momentum indicators on the four-hour time frame, SPY is looking relatively strong. On the daily time frame, okay, the S&P 500 SPY, it's still holding up. It's still making higher highs and higher lows. There is a bearish divergence developing on the daily and also the four-hour, but there's no sign of it playing out yet, and the charts remain bullish. The weekly is also looking very bullish. There's no sign of us quitting just yet. If I zoom out of the charts all the way, let me just show you the all-time high at 480. I think it's trying to get to that. It's going to likely try to break that before we see some kind of correction or pullback. So I, I presume we're going to likely see some more attempts for upside. Now, what I think is going to happen is I think that we're going to eventually reach very close to 480. Uh, could we, you know, get some kind of like false break like this? And then we just come back like that. It is, it's another possibility. We could just slowly see the bulls step in for the remainder of the year, try to push us until the year ends. We could just see more upside. The market is still holding up. So in my opinion, we look bullish. We're still uptrending. There's no sign of us stopping. What is my prediction? We're going to be watching our resistance levels. We have 476.5 as resistance. If it breaks this, I think it could just get very close to 478. If it breaks that, 480 is going to be on the cards. Then we have like 482 above that, which I'm not too sure we're going to go that high yet, but I'm just going to be watching like 480 first. If we end up breaking back down, make sure you watch this 475.8 to 476 area. If we break below that, 474 is going to be key. That's going to be a very, very key support. If that fills us, there's 472 and 470. In my opinion, the chart is bullish. We're making higher highs and higher lows. I think we're going to just continue to push. We're going to be looking for a target of 478 on SPY. That's going to be very key for now. And I think that overall, the trend still favors that. On the QQQ, it's the same thing. It's almost identical. It's the same chart, basically. We got this false break, full recovery, filled this imbalance, and we're just continuing to go. I'm going to be watching... This resistance right here, I called out this level earlier, guys. I said that we could get very close to 412. We actually got close to it today. 412 is going to be a key resistance. We'll see how we get there. As of right now, we're holding the support. If you want to turn bearish, you want to see it lose. Basically, 410 and 409, and then we could turn a little bearish if you make a lower high. Uh, we haven't done that yet. So far, we're holding up. So watch those supports. There's 410, uh, 409.5, 409, and 408 and beyond. For resistance, make sure you watch 412. If we break that, our next level is going to be this 414 zone. I would say that it looks bullish. And I think 412 is coming on the QQQ, so I favor the upside a bit more. For NVIDIA, it's looking bullish because we have this imbalance to fill at 497. Uh, I think that what's going to happen is NVIDIA is going to try to hold this trend, try to slowly uptrend, because now it's coming back to making higher highs and higher lows. I think it's going to just maintain this channel, come back into it, and start pushing for a target to get very close to 500 very, very soon. We're going to be watching to see NVIDIA try to hold up. Could it retrace just a little bit more, retest 492, then bounce and start pushing for that uh, very, very good price target of almost 500. I think NVIDIA has more in the tank. If you want to turn bearish on NVIDIA, you want to see it lose 488. Hasn't done that yet. Overall, to me, it still looks bullish. Uh, on Tesla stock, I would say that Tesla, in my opinion, is looking decent right now, but it's not extremely bullish yet. Uh, so overall, the trend is bullish on Tesla for like the much bigger time frames. I called this out earlier, guys, so like on the weekly time frame. Uh, we, we look bullish, right? Overall, we look really bullish when it comes to the much bigger picture for the next few months going into next year. I just want to make that as clear as possible. I hope my words don't get misinterpreted. But for the super short term, and by short term, I mean the next few days, next few weeks, it's not looking as insanely bullish yet because we've been very stationary short term. Meaning, if you look at this, we tend to hit 258 to 260, then reject. Right, we have that supply zone, 
And then when we reach support down here at 247 to 250, we tend to see buyers step in and try to defend it. So we're kind of stuck between supply and demand going back and forth and back and forth. If we're bullish, we want to see this thing try to break this 260 resistance. If we break this, we could start to turn much more bullish, get above this yellow trend line. Uh, so far, it hasn't done that, but it's getting closer. So it's showing some life. I, I, I would say Tesla is making attempts to break, but it hasn't fully done it yet. And we have to wait and see if we can get there. So I think going into tomorrow, we could see Tesla retrace just a little bit, re grab some liquidity down here, uh, right where this breakout was, this 255 zone, then try to push. Maybe during the pre-market, it comes down and tries pushing. We're going to be watching to see if Tesla could try to close above 258 to 260. It might pull back just a bit, then try to bounce as long as there's no bad news. Uh, but we're going to be approaching this resistance. So we'll see if we could try to break 258 to 260 or if we get another rejection as we rejected for the last four times we tested it. We'll just wait and see, guys. A drop and pop and a big test is coming. And we'll see if Tesla rejects or not. That's going to be key, especially going into tomorrow. Uh, but for now, as the market's holding up, there's a good chance Tesla might try to push even higher, especially as deliveries is approaching. Tesla's primed for some good numbers, especially after the good shinies numbers that came today. For Apple, it's downtrending. We have a very, very strong downtrend right here in this new channel that developed. But I just want to call out that Apple's trying to base very close to this 193 area to 192.5. We will see if this thing breaks down or not. We have 192 is a key support to be watching for. If you want to turn bullish, you want to see it break 193.5 and start you know, uptrending. Hasn't done that yet. It still is looking uh, like it could drop a bit, but it's trying to base at the same time. So if you're really bearish, you want to see it lose 192.5 and come down like this towards 192. Then we have 190 below that. If you're bullish, you want to see it basically break out of 193.5 and start pushing out. That's going to be the bullish case. Right now, all it's doing is it's slowly dropping, but now it's just choppy, very, very sideways. It's trying to base. That's what's very good about Apple. It's trying to hold this level. We're seeing buyers trying to defend. Just like when we touched this liquidity zone and bounced, came back down. We're just seeing buyers trying to defend it. So with us shopping in this range, we're going to be looking to see if we could get some kind of break or not. My gut is telling me Apple's going to see another consolidation day and maybe make an attempt to try to break. I have a feeling it's going to try to get back to 193.5 plus, try to bounce because it's been dropping for quite some time and we're approaching the end of the year. Apple might get a decent bounce before the year ends, in my opinion. Uh, if we look at the much smaller time frames, such as the hourly time frame, I think it's very important to note this. We have a slight bullish divergence developing. Maybe Apple could get that bounce, but we need to see confirmation first. Hasn't done it yet, but I think there's definitely potential. Uh, so if anything, I think it's going to chop around a bit tomorrow. We're going to be looking to see if Apple could try to break out and try to bounce and help spy and the QQQ out. We'll be waiting to see if Apple could do it, give it the time it needs, and then we'll see how it goes. Now, I just want to talk about a couple more tickers. NEO is looking bullish. We're going to test the daily 200 EMA, in my opinion, at 9.7. A little bit more upside should be coming before we see possibly $10. We'll see if that comes. Uh, we got a very, very nice NEO day, so let's hope that that helps us out. As far as the IWM goes, the Russell 2000, we were talking about this thing hitting 205 recently. We actually reached 204.5. This thing has potential to go all the way up to 210 if it keeps on pushing like this. There's definitely potential for it. And I think that small caps, like I said in my earlier videos, have so much potential. So I want to see 210. I think it could slowly push up higher. And we'll see if it could try to continue into tomorrow. It looks bullish so far on the weekly, so it does have more room to go. As far as Microsoft goes, just going to be quick with this one. Microsoft to me is looking kind of decent, it's kind of flat right now. It's not really doing a whole lot. If you look at the four hour time frame, it's been stuck between 377 and about uh, basically like 370 for the last couple of trading days, back and forth and back and forth. Tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised if after this liquidity grab, if it actually drops back down towards like 372.88, then it pushes back up and just continues to trade sideways. I'm anticipating a little drop when we open before it tries to continue back up. So that's what I'm seeing for tomorrow for AMD. It started off a little weak, but it got back above 142, which is bullish. Going to be looking for a push for 145. And then on the daily time frame, you can see we have this resistance that's coming up right here. Way back here, I have to go. We have this 150 area, then 154 above that. I could see 150. Uh, very soon if we could get back above 145. Uh, that's going to be very, very key for us. So we'll see if we can break that resistance. Then 150 would be our next target. So it looks bullish overall in the daily time from nice inverse head and shoulders. Uh, I could see more upside. 
look for an attempt to get up to 145 and we'll see how it reacts to that before we go higher uh for something else the vix is very flat right now not really doing a whole lot gonna be looking to see if we can break the 50 ema if we break this it could push up more as of right now it failed to do so and because it failed to break that like i said guys the daily looks kind of weak so i wouldn't be surprised if the vix actually cools off a bit uh, i'm thinking it's gonna bounce and cool off which tells me that the market could cause this by maybe like kind of dropping a little bit during the pre-market and then pushing back up tomorrow again that's what i'm seeing the dollar looks kind of weak which is once again bullish for stocks coinbase in my opinion uh this thing had a slight red day it is cooling off just a bit after hitting this 178 area look for a retracement towards this wick right over here wouldn't be surprised if we see 166 a retest of 166 and a bounce is very probable so we'll see how it goes as far as google goes daily is looking kind of weak we're actually forming like a doji so it could retrace towards 141 we also have this gap to fill down 138 so i could see google actually retrace just a little bit very small amounts before it tries to bounce again daily is still looking kind of strong with the doji is telling me that it might actually retrace just a little bit towards 141 so watch for a little retracement on it amazon is just completely flat not really doing much it's actually forming a wedge right now so we're gonna be looking for which way it breaks i think it, we could see amazon retrace just a bit and retest this wick right here at 151.8 and then try to bounce after that and just continue to trade sideways uh for meta it looks like to me it's very indecisive again uh trading very flat forming a doji this suggests that we could see retracement towards 351 and then 350 below that wouldn't be surprised if it back tests 350 and tries to bounce after that so it is looking a little weaker so we might see a few stocks such as meta and amazon cool off just a bit but everything else or at least the majority of stocks out there are still looking quite decent spy definitely has potential spx has potential uh you know the nasdaq also has potential but tesla of all things it has it also has potential to push up more but it's getting stuck by this resistance between 258 to 260 so watch that very carefully anyways that's it for the video hopefully this video was insightful and helpful for people out there we'll see how tesla does can tesla try to get a close above 260 that's going to be a big question if it achieves that it will have more potential otherwise it's going to be continued uh, continuing to just trade within its little range the range i called out earlier all right guys that's it for this video hopefully this technical analysis was helpful i hope this video brought some more insights about how the market's doing and we'll see how things go as we approach the end of the year thank you for listening have a great day the market to the moon is the long term is still incredibly bright and peace out